Hello, this is Kevin Kalmus, CEO and co-founder of Nested Knowledge, bringing you our most exciting AI launch so far this year, and that is Core Smart Tags. First, if you know how a review is generally completed in Nested Knowledge, you are familiar with our search capabilities, the ability to identify records of interest and then tag them with custom concepts that you configure yourself, and then of course the ability to visualize this in interactive dashboards. Now we are launching Core Smart Tags, which will enable you to do each of those steps with an AI generating your content of interest. What do I mean by that? If you bring your research question, which can be as simple as a disease state or a therapy or both <laughs> to a uh, to your search exploration, then you will be able to build out uh, the population, the interventions, the comparators, and the outcomes, as well as location and size and other details from your uh, research question into a search strategy. From there, as soon as you bring records into your project, core smart tags will automatically generate a hierarchy, not only of your questions of interest, but of the actual PICOS, location, size, and study type from the underlying records that you brought back from your search. And lastly, Core Smart Tags will enable you to create custom visuals in dashboards, such as the one you can see in the bottom left here, uh, to visualize that information once it is extracted from records. So when we think about this, what are some use cases for Core Smart Tags? Possibly the earliest that you can use in any review will be scoping. So whether you're doing a rapid review or a systematic review, you often want to figure out what does the liter literature actually contain on my question of interest? And this is a perfect way to scope out in a preliminary search and then in preliminary extraction, what exists out there that I will be able to pull from helps uh, this, which will help me figure out how many records I will bring back as well as what I can actually extract from them and data quality. This can also help with protocol generation for a full systematic review, since it's of course bringing back the concepts that I will then be able to extract. So think about it as a feasibility tool in that case. Uh, and then lastly, that feeds very well into proposal drafting, whether you're proposing to the NIH or to a customer uh, or even to your PI. If you want to put together a review, this is a great way to show your subject matter knowledge, to bring together the important evidence that will motivate the, uh, the review itself and the answers you are seeking. And then lastly, of course, uh, show the capabilities of the software platform itself for completing that proposed research. You can also treat Core Smart Tags as something of a standalone AI for completing AI wrapped reviews. Of course, you will still need to give the input of your research question and you'll have to give feedback from those search terms that the AI has recommended. But if you want to build out a rapid review where the AI is responsible for the search term suggestion, where it is responsible for extracting the key data and then visualizing it for you, that is a use case for Core Smart Tags. And that is actually something you are generally going to be able to do in a single session. In fact, that's what we're going to do today. And then the last use case for Core Smart Tags, which I think will be very familiar for anyone who has used our tagging hierarchies, it can be work intensive to take a research question and then turn that into a structured set of specific extractable data elements or concepts that you might want to take from the underlying literature. So let's do all three combined today in this demonstration of Nested Knowledge's new core smart tags for scoping, for rapid reviews, and of course, for learning more about both how AI interacts with the medical uh, literature and the power of Nested Knowledge in our tagging hierarchies for extracting from it. All right, let's jump straight in. And for today, I thought we would test in a question of interest to many, including myself, uh, which is the effect of the uh, recently emerging GLP-1 agonists for the treatment of obesity. Let's just create a new project. And once we have done so, we are able to jump straight into a literature search, or if we want to use core smart tags, we generally begin with search exploration. As we begin our search exploration, we want to characterize our research question in terms of the basic concepts that we're searching for. So here, I'm going to look for GLP-1 and for obesity. And even with something as simple as this, we can simply start exploring. When we run search exploration, this is going to run our obesity and GLP-1 search on PubMed. 
and it's going to bring back relevant records, which it will then uh, extract the population, the interventions, the outcomes, as well as the location, types, and sizes of the underlying studies, which I should use in an iterative process where I'm getting feedback from the AI on what the underlying studies are reporting, and I'm using that to refine what I'm searching for, both expanding by adding terms that uh, bring back new records, or by uh, constricting or adding terms that might help narrow in on the records of interest. Uh, so we can see immediately that this PICOS breakdown gives us a summary of the studies themselves. It looks like we're looking at uh, patients with obesity or obese patients, that may be a term worth adding, who are treated with GLP-1 agonists, including semaglutide, and of course, where key outcomes include body weight or weight loss. Uh, and we may actually even want to make weight loss our uh, primary outcome for this research. So let's add body weight, let's add weight loss. And in terms of interventions, we may want to extract semaglutide and uh, liraglutide, as well as the full, uh, uh, the full term for GLP-1 agonists. And then we should organize these using groupings. So let's make a grouping for each population interventions and outcomes. And then let's sort these out. So uh, our obese and obesity uh, population terms, GLP-1, and then all of the other interventions of interest. And then of course our outcomes. And this will build out our Boolean query, which we will then be able to run on PubMed or other databases, pull back the records and extract from them. Um, and noting how many records are coming back and wanting to narrow in on high quality evidence, I'm also going to add a study type uh, where I want to zero in on randomized or RCT evidence. Uh, now there are validated standard hedges for study type, but in the interest of time, we're going to search for randomized or for RCT, and then we're going to examine the underlying results. I can at this point also refresh exploration. We've gone from around 6,000 results to 1,000, so we might want to check in on what the AI tells us about this newer, smaller subset of records. So we rerun, it ingests the new studies, reruns I, I core smart tags, and note that we didn't actually even look at study types or location or size yet. Perhaps we should have in order to generate these, uh, these search terms, but we're now going to be able to jump back in on, of course, either our narrowed PICOS uh, or the PICOS from our narrowed search set um, or on those other core smart tags. All right, so let's jump in. We can, of, of course, first examine our PICOS. And for those, uh, we can see that very little has changed from our initial search. Um, obesity and overweight are now higher uh, uh, in the ranking. Placebo is reported more often, but we're really zeroing in on exactly what we were originally looking for. So I think our PICOS may be in good shape. So we're gonna move on to study type. Note that we searched for RCTs. Um, and even though we added randomized or RCT into the search term, some observational studies that likely uh, uh, use the word randomized in their abstracts, and then of course some reviews of RCTs or, or meta-analyses of RCTs have also come back. So what I can use this for is to tell me that I may want to add some negations of those uh, study types. So we can negate review, we can negate meta-analysis, uh, we can negate um, observational. So let's add those concepts. Let's negate this grouping and drag these terms into it. That should limit our evidence down to studies that are reporting RCT or randomized, but not reporting uh, reviews or meta-analyses. And of course, we can continue uh, looking at the location and the study sizes reported. Um, again, we can also continue to refresh our exploration. So in this case, I'm gonna refresh and make sure we're pulling back only the uh, uh, actual RCTs instead of reviews thereof. While we're waiting for this, one strategic note. Um, in a systematic review, you're generally going to be looking to be as comprehensive as possible. So that means avoid adding any terms that might limit the studies that would sneak through and truly build out your comprehensive review if you left it wide open. Of course, that does increase your screening burden, which we'd like to avoid in this uh, review. So in a TLR or an AI rapid review, we're going to focus more on uh, on specificity than on sensitivity, meaning 
we're going to prefer to exclude studies that are not of interest rather than including studies of interest in our query. So now we can see we have the study types drilled down far more on RCTs. And of course, we can now go and examine the locations of those underlying studies. So we can see that most of the underlying evidence is coming from the US in this choropleth or color-coded map where color represents the frequency of reporting. Um, we can see that there's some evidence from Canada, some from several European countries, uh, second most from China. Uh, this is for our information. Uh, if we wanted to drill down on the reporting from or for a specific jurisdiction, this could be uh, a way to limit our search. In my case, I'm interested in international evidence, so I'm not going to add any new terms. I'm going to move forward to study size. Uh, study size will give you a histogram that will go from the smallest to the largest studies. So we can see here that we're going from studies that are in the range of 5 to 10 all the way up to 60,000 patients. So we might still have some reviews that are sneaking through, but yet again, in the interest of time in this demo, uh, rather than further uh, adjust our search query, we're going to finalize. Let's limit this down to more recent and relevant evidence. Let's run our search on PubMed. And this, uh, if you've previously run searches on nested knowledge, you'll know that this will run the search directly on PubMed. It will pull back relevant records uh, and it will allow me to potentially run future searches. It will also deduplicate those uh, records and put all their metadata and their abstracts into our screening queue so that we're able to examine which ones we might want to include. Uh, now, with core smart tags, we're also going to take a little bit of time to process uh, the actual evidence and use our AI to extract those P, I, O, study type, uh, study size, and location. And of course, at this point, we can move forward and configure our screening reasons. Um, in this case, uh, since core smart tags are focused on the search and on the uh, extraction phase, I'm going to instead bulk include these records and move forward to configuring my hierarchy. Uh, note that in an AI rapid review, it may be appropriate to initially tag all underlying records and then actually use the AI extractions to selectively exclude studies that should not have come in in the first place. But let's go ahead and examine this across all studies that resulted from our search. So as soon as we have included these, we can see that our search has completed. It's brought back 223 records and we can immediately jump in and configure or extraction. So if you've used tagging hierarchies previously, you will know that these are both a method for recognizing concepts within underlying studies and a replacement for Excel-based data extraction. The normal method up to today has been to create your own tagging hierarchy by, of course, creating and naming concepts. Say you could have made a tag called population and layered an obesity tag underneath it. But uh, this is where core smart tags can come in as both a time saver and as a way to responsibly build your hierarchy to represent the underlying evidence that was brought in from your search. Instead of uh, building out the hierarchy ourselves, if we wanted to simply build out those core smart tags, all we need to do is select core. This will open up a menu where we can select which core smart tags we'd like to extract. I should also add a research question because this will help the AI identify the specificity of our tags. It will help the AI identify our uh, key concepts to extract. So let's make a general but concrete research question like, oh my goodness, in RCTs, with weight loss. So we have put in a research question, and then our last choice is going to be, would we like to treat these core smart tags as recommendations, which is the standard, or as directly applied tags? Now, this choice should really center around how much I want to delegate to the AI, which would mean directly apply, or how much I want to manually curate what it pulls from underlying studies, in which case I may want to have these as recommendations. My general approach to this is if I'm doing a systematic review, I'm going to have these as recommendations. If I'm doing an AI rapid review, I'm going to want them as direct applications. So 
Let's hit apply and see what the AI can build out in terms of core smart tags that are scoped in on our research question and that can reflect the contents that we may want to extract from underlying studies. Uh, and note that actually while these are running, unlike with the custom smart tags that you may have used before, there's no extra run step once you've created your core smart tags. Uh, these don't need to be uh, uh, examined or applied to underlying studies if we've selected the apply option. As soon as the hierarchy is built, all of the information is extracted from the underlying studies. So we can treat this as effectively a search that brings back our records of interest, a screening exercise, uh, which in this case we have deferred uh, until after we've identified the core contents from underlying studies, and of course, extraction, which we are currently undertaking from our underlying records. All right, let's examine this. Uh, the population characteristics generated, demographics make a lot of sense. We do want to break down whether we're studying adults and we may want to, of course, identify which gender uh, our patients are. Health status, uh, we're able to break down patients into those who are overweight, overweight or obese and we can extract their BMIs. And then in terms of chronic conditions, it looks like the AI has recognized that underlying studies are reporting type two diabetes. Now, I should review these because I may see things that are either uh, uh, not of interest to me or not reflective of our key research questions. And in this case, I'm gonna say that study participants is a rather general concept, which may not be reflective of our research here. So let's delete the study role and study participants tag um, in this case. Now, any deletions can just move forward, but if I wanted to further customize these, say if I wanted to also extract type one diabetes from underneath the diabetes tag, I would need to uh, further either manually extract those or run custom smart tags on top of any tags that I either create or edit uh, because the core smart tags will only run using the exact tags that you see here. And so any edits need to take that into account uh, and then any new tags need to be uh, either manually extracted, as I said earlier, or run through custom smart tags. Now, examining our interventions of interest, this is great. We've seen that the pharmacological treatments have been broken out. We have our GLP-1 agonists including several that were not actually in our search term. So this is reflective that the AI is truly extracting from the underlying abstracts and not just from our searches or our research question. Note also that the AI has recognized that an SGLT2 inhibitor uh, is reported either in combination with or in comparison against GLP-1 agonists, and then other pharmaceutical treatments, surgical interventions, and even uh, uh, placebo uh, are recognized by the AI as potential interventions, or in fact, reported interventions. Now, uh, in the case of outcomes, we have a very general safety outcome reported here. We could, of course, build out further adverse events of interest uh, that we wanted to drill down on and use custom smart tags. But in this case, I'm actually very happy to see that uh, HbA1c levels and specific blood glucose levels, insulin levels, are key outcome of body weight or weight loss, and BMI are all reported here. So uh, with that, let's examine study types. These are going to be much more consistent in their structure. Uh, of course, in this case, we're going to want to drill down mostly on the randomized controlled trials, but the AI is going to give a uh, structure in your review that is very similar to what you see here, where it's going to extract observational studies, tell you which ones are case reports or series, randomized controlled trials, reviews, preclinical evidence, and other. And then of course, we are always going to extract study size and location. So in my opinion, this hierarchy is looking great. I had one set of tags that I wanted to delete under population, but otherwise let's move forward and see what the AI has extracted. Now, I could examine this in the tagging module, but since we did bulk apply these, I'm actually gonna jump forward directly to the qualitative synthesis, where we can see that the AI has already extracted our demographic characteristics of interest. And then also we can drill down on our interventions. Uh, and see, say, patients who had semaglutide used um, and where HbA1c or body weight uh, was reported as well. This filters our qualitative synthesis diagram down to our concepts of interest, and I can click in on any of these studies to not only see an abstract, but also see what tags were actually extracted within that underlying study. So we can see here that the demographics, the ages of patients, uh, the uh, fact that they were obese and or overweight, um, coming into the study, uh, these patients were treated with semaglutide or placebo, and then of course the percentage change in body weight uh, or weight loss was reported in addition.
and we can simply click through these studies to see the overall reporting across each of these. Um, the AI will extract the text segment that it finds to be most representative of what you looked for. Of course, from this view, we can use this to summarize studies, but from our tagging view, we are able to use this to override or extract other information from the underlying records. So, in qualitative synthesis, use the filters to drill down on studies of interest, say, those that compare two specific drugs with respect to our outcomes of interest, and then click in on the uh, underlying studies to examine what I, I effectively summarization uh, of the underlying concepts of interest were extracted by the AI. Now let's jump back into the tagging hierarchy because uh, I noted earlier that we may also want to examine the text segments themselves and have the ability to edit them. So if we jump in to tagging and look at the abstract for the underlying studies, we are able to examine and override any of the excerpts or the tags themselves that were extracted by the AI. These were all, of course, bulk applied the moment that they were uh, recommended by the AI. And if I find any of these to uh, report the incorrect information for our review, then I'm, of course, uh, able to override them. In this case, I can remove diabetes and move forward to our interventions, ensure that we are, in fact, comparing placebo against liraglutide. Uh, and then if we move forward to our outcomes, we can see that it reported postprandial glucose response, but that the text segment that it reported was not actually uh, reporting the change in postprandial glucose response. So what we can do is highlight the exact text segment that reports this. We can apply that tag and we can remove the earlier application. Uh, of course, no AI review will be perfect and we highly recommend that anything that's moving forward to a systematic approach should be curated so that you ensure that you have tagged studies correctly and that the underlying text segments are reflective of your outcomes of interest. We can, of course, then move on to the next study, hit complete for this one, and complete any further review that we consider uh, necessary for this review. However, uh, I wanted to move forward and show the last major capability that we mentioned earlier regarding for smart tags, and that is the ability to create custom visuals that represent the uh, tags, the size, and the location in which studies are reported. Those of you who have used Dashboard before have likely used this to create text conclusions, to upload images, or show your screening in Prisma charts. You may have even created tables to summarize your PICOS, or your study types, or your sizes, or locations. We can, of course, do so using any of our core smart tags. So if we wanted to create a table of the populations, of the interventions or of the outcomes reported in underlying studies. All we need to do is create uh, those columns, add this table, and then this will be part of our interactive dashboard. But the new capability added with Core Smart Tags is the ability to create several different tag-based visuals. So let's click in and see what these are. The first is what I might call a uh, a zoomed in or a sub slice of QLS. So if we wanted to look at QLS interventions, we would be able to select sunburst as our type, and then we would simply select the tag that we wanted to zoom in on in the QLS. So let's look at interventions, add this, and of course, we're able to drill down immediately on the number of studies reporting any of our given interventions uh, uh, with exact numbers of studies. Of course, to drill down further on the underlying uh, associated studies and other concepts that might be reported within them, we should jump to the QLS. But this is a quick visual that you can use to communicate to your users what interventions are reported in our study. You could, of course, do the same for any other parent or uh, parent tag in your hierarchy. In addition, we offer a visual uh, showing that exact same histogram that we saw in search exploration. We should select study size and give this a title, add this visual, and it will create a histogram that we can jump in on and see the breakdown of studies by the number of patients reported within them. Yet again, uh, we can use this to also help narrow the studies that we should go back and exclude. We still have some reviews that are reporting 30, uh, 300,000 or more patients. We should jump back in, exclude those, and this visual will be updated live and automatically. 
The last is the choropleth, which again is that map of study locations, which we can see will give us basically a color-coded breakdown of where the underlying evidence may be reported from. We can use this to effectively identify both the jurisdictions that the evidence came from and where, of course, it may be of interest to. All right. With that, we can jump to the synthesis, see that our dashboard has been built. Uh, like any other dashboard that we build in nested knowledge, this is going to be shareable under the sharing settings by link, shareable by QR code, can even be embedded. And of course, if anyone wants to drill down further on the underlying concepts that were reported in our uh, initial review here, they can jump over and see the qualitative synthesis and drill down on the concepts in their own custom manner. Thank you so much for your attention. And in brief review, I will say that Core Smart Tags are not only an amazing tool for scoping, completing AI rapid reviews, and for rapidly learning and uh, building out uh, tagging hierarchies within nested knowledge, they also serve as a method for extracting evidence, for understanding the concepts that might be reported in underlying literature, and can help you build out final visuals uh, within a single session, as we have here, to uh, understand and examine key research questions from the medical literature. Thanks so much, and happy reviewing.